Okay, we're live, you got it. Let me close down this other screen. And what I'll do is actually open my phone so we can follow if anyone's asking questions or saying anything we want to respond to. So hello, ladies. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, give me one quick second. Okay, cool. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. You can hear me good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so welcome to anyone who's watching now or later. We're inside of inside of the inner circle. <laughs> How did you manage that? I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, we, we had this intention of like recording this video together. So for those of you who don't know, Eleni and Shannon are support coaches for School of Love. So Eleni is currently supporting your third round. So Eleni's done her own. Eleni was a student in Inner Circle, and now she's supporting her third round of, in the group of women calling in love. And Shannon did two rounds as a student in Inner Circle, and you're now supporting the women in relationships. So we wanted to, hi, Melissa. Hello, lovely lady. It's been a while. It's funny I'm seeing your name. I'll, I'll message you after and tell you why. Um, we just wanted to share kind of like, oh my God, what it's really like inside of the Inner Circle, because we were chatting like it's kind of impossible to put onto a sales page or in a post to translate the, like what really happens in inner circle and the feeling inside of the circle in writing. It can try, but it's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. All right, I think it would be a beautiful place to start with maybe even like what makes you feel excited to be supporting the inner circle like why it feels important to you we'll start with either of you just go for it go shannon go for it shannon. i'm like my my like eyes are tearing up <laughs> it feels important to me to be supporting the inner circle because it's really about supporting the women's their vision for what they desire their love to feel like and you know i think about how much time we spend with our partners in our lives together and when that doesn't feel whole and fulfilling and hope filled it is it sucks the life out of us it feels like oh man for women in relationships you dream of having these like relationships that are just so soul filling and they so can be, except for we're not really taught how to sustain that. And mm -hmm. so the supporting women in the circle of, of in their circle feels like like supporting this desire that all women share to have these soul-filling relationships. It's just yeah, so magical. Yeah. It's yeah. so critically important. Yeah. And and I will just speak to Shannon's magic. Yeah, Shannon's magic here of like, you have this beautiful way, Shannon, of pouring compassion onto the women and like opening like imagine the like open like you're questioning or the the what's the word I'm looking for metaphors that you make let me you're really good with the metaphors too and then it's like it takes them into this like realm of possibility and they can just explore there and I would say one of the things that's so special and I think we should touch on this in a deeper way in a moment I want to hear from you Eleni is like we love them so unconditionally that a lot of them will say for the first time ever, they're like, I'm so held and so loved. I can let go of my armor and just say the things that I really feel and ask the questions that I really have and like feel myself for the first time. But I think we should dig into that in a whole, in a whole way. What is it like for you, Lenny? Hmm. Um, there's obviously so many things, but the first thing that comes to me is this is is a duty to womanhood and a duty to sisterhood. Mm -hmm. I feel that my own experience in the inner circle was this like self-love course that I wasn't privy to, right? That we didn't get growing up. Um, and not because our mothers didn't necessarily want to give it to us but because they didn't have it there themselves. Like I remember going through the course myself and thinking a lot of my mom, you know, and sharing things about it and, 
seeing like, so for me, it goes like so deep. It goes to like women generally, generationally in the past and women generationally forward. And the impact that going through inner circle had to me was just this journey back to myself and uh, a teaching of how to honor myself before love, getting to explore love with new possibilities. And now in the beginning, I mean, it's been a little bit over a year that I'm in my relationship Mm -hmm. with Hector and just, just that it's like how to honor yourself in that process. And I felt that it was such a invaluable coming home Mm -hmm. and this beautiful gift. And I'm like, everybody needs to be able to feel this because it's what we deserve. It's, it's what's important. It's what makes us enjoy relationships more and it's actually what makes our partner enjoy us more is our capacity you know to to come home to ourselves and have that home and carry that and we might lose it along the way but that's what it is and I'm like I need to continue to be part of that I feel a sense of duty a sense of like oh like all the women need and so if I could just be a tiny part of that and I feel really honored to get to do that you know and in this transition phase which is really weird. And I love transition phases. I've always had a hard time with change. I always like to take like the new kids and say like, here, let me show you the way. And I'm really happy that I got to live like all these different stages and still carry them very presently and translate that to, to the women who are looking for love. Mm. There's something you said I really want to touch on because like when you said everybody deserves this or every, you know, everybody like needs this. And I was thinking like legitimately everyone does actually yes and I also think there are markers that make someone more ready for this journey like inner circle is a journey and and there's a like like deep exploration and also a lot of practice and integration if 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 it's available to you ladies like what do you feel and I can speak to this too as well but like what are some of the things that you notice like in the women who are like really expanding in the circles, which actually all of them are, what are the qualities about them that make them ready for this journey? So if someone's watching and they're kind of like, well, is inner circle for me? Like, how do you even know if this is for you? Hmm. Are you ready, Shannon? If you are, go ahead. Are you ready? Are Mm -hmm. you ready? (laughs) I am ready. (laughs) Hi Bernie. Hi Hoda. Um, I think for me, it's 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 a woman who's um, the, there's this sense of like enough of being inside of an old story or an old pattern. It's a woman who um, maybe has a little bit of anger mm-hmm. or a little bit of um, it's like a fire under her butt, but she doesn't really know what it means or what to do with it, and she knows that there's a new way but she doesn't know that what the new way is and there's this there's this yearning for better and and she also knows that she's part of the equation she knows that it's it's not like it's not out there you know mm-hmm. it's not life there's not a sense of victimhood there's a real sense of agency it's like i know that in order to get to a new level of myself or a new version of myself or a reinvention or empowered whatever you want that there's I know that there's agency within me, that there's something within my power that I get to do. So from at least the women coming in, I think that there's that. And at the same time, I ironically, there's also this yearning to like do less. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like this sense Mm -hmm. of like, I know there's a part of me that I need to do. And I know there's a part of me where I get to do less, but I have no idea how to find that balance. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. You Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I'd say that's so much the same, that last piece, especially for women in relationships too. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about this sort of sense of agency and knowing that we're not like truly believing that we have capacity to change, that there is this like, I truly believe there's another way. I just really have no idea what that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that this can feel better. I know this partner for women in relationships, mm-hmm. these relationships, the people who really like, I mean, everybody has expansion, but the ones who like fully 
bloom into their desires and can continue to do the work themselves work we can call it work but mm -hmm. can continue to integrate themselves are the ones who are already with somebody who is like fully there for them and all that's really needed is a change in perspective mm. like it's it really is those like folks who are really really good at doing the things yeah. <laughs> really high achieving like believe it go-getters kind of people and the reason why inner circle is so necessary is because that go-getterness that go out and do it and make it all work and like hustle is the opposite of what you need in yeah. order to fully receive your desires mm -hmm. and receive your partner for who they already are and what they already have face for your partner to to actually show you that they're there for you and it's so yeah. hard for them to do that when we're like constantly like, okay, and we're going to try this and we got to do that and boom, we're doing this. Yeah. And we have to have like weekly meetings about <laughs> where we're at in our relationship at this time on Friday and that can work. Right. But like also dancing with your partner and I, and I actually, what you're saying, Shannon really resonates with me because when I think about why the circle for women in relationships for me felt like needed to happen and come to life is because it's, it's what I need, right? It's what I would have needed. It's like, I'm in a beautiful relationship. It's not a question of, is this the right partner for me? It's like, when we're not in harmony, it's, it's like, it's, I can see where I am contributing to the disconnect. And I can see how it, my journey of releasing control and softening would open up to, would open me up to all the love that he's ready to pour into me and onto me right? It's like, that's the piece. It's not, and we're not in crisis, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, there's a deconditioning that is yearning, I'm yearning to happen within me that allows that space to open for him and like really receive him. I have an analogy that came through. Mm -hmm. So like when Shannon, you started to talk about, um, you know, like the go-getterness and then no, no. I had this vision of like, you know, a woman, like I want to have the key and I would want to know where the key goes. And I want to know like what lock to unlock so I can understand him and do this and that, you know, and the, the sense of over-functioning that we tend to get in as women, get into as women. And then I'm like, and it's the keys to ourselves, mm. you know? So it's, it's, it's more so that it's like, Ooh, like what's, what's my key to surrender more what's my key mm -hmm. to receive more what's my key to soften more mm -hmm. what's my key to desire more like it's almost like I feel like they're there and they don't even know that those little doors within them exist and and I feel like part of that is like oh here like you actually do have access and I'm going to show you how to access it you know mm -hmm. like there's a there's a door that opens into like deeper trust of yourself mm -hmm. and your partner and the universe and mm -hmm. you know a door that opens into the possibility that you could experience I'm just literally talking about myself <laughs> like <laughs> more I'm like, like it more, sounds like you more joy more fun more like just time you know mm -hmm. like you just get to relax into this life mm -hmm. it's a big one I told, I don't know if I was telling Diana, and maybe I wrote this at some point somewhere, but, you know, we've watched all these movies, I think, as little girls, like, again, if we were talking about conditioning mm -hmm. of, like, a woman being swept off her feet by her Prince Charming, mm -hmm. and then that movie ends with this beautiful wedding, and that is that. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. What happens nobody, after? <laughs> yeah, nobody actually ever shows you what it's like. Like, there are no movies that are made of, like, joy-filled love, and yet navigating when we go off track, or how we come back to each other when we are both inside of our own like stories right because we are people that come together having lived a life that then shapes how we show up in our relationships yes. with your partner with your friends with your sister with your mother with whoever right like what we learn and experience and practice inside of the inner circle is like really ripples out to all our relationships oh. like mm -hmm. all our relationships mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I find there's like a reclaiming of self and like womanhood and like, you know, goddess energy, you know, it's, it's navigating two people coming together in a relationship is intense. And now if you're in a season like we are in adding two other humans that we've created and are now in our home and it's like, whoa, <laughs> there's all this new stuff and all this demand and responsibility and who are we outside of all the to do's and who am I, who am I outside of all the to do's and how do I anchor into her and find a place in my body that I can access her and like you know even just the most it's the most subtle things like this morning it's time for Sophia to to go to daycare in the morning and Jack is like okay I'm coming give me a few minutes and I'm coming to, he's going to take her and I have things to do and when I like there's there are two parts of me that are like that are accessible and which part do I want to choose the part that calls him again because he was upstairs <laughs> holding her the part that calls him again and says are you coming soon to take her <laughs> or the part of me that's like relax into your life you know his intention is to come and get her and take her to daycare there's no need to create a moment of stress or disconnect here and when will you let that go what am i waiting for to finally relax into my life mm. And it's that subtle, it's that decision that makes all the difference between how we like now feel around each other and speak to each other and welcome each other and feel in the space together and welcome the day, right? And it's like, and that has a whole entire ripple effect. Okay, we're talking, we're talking a lot about two about women in relationships. But wait, was, oh, I was thinking. Yeah, go for it. I really was thinking about you know, relaxing into your life is a lot like, I think, what you talk about as it relates to the slow burn. It, mm. It's like sustaining hope mm. that in the spaces in between where you see no evidence that your partner is going to show up for you, whether your partner is going to show up for you and he's just upstairs or your partner is <laughs> going to show up for you and you have no idea where he is in the world. <laughs> right. Like waiting, waiting for him to find you. Yeah. I mean, okay. You're not waiting for him to find you though. Mm -hmm. You know, you are holding yours. You are relaxing into your own life, trusting mm -hmm. that he's on his way. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that resonates with the slow burn. Mm, that was good, Shannon. We can take it from here, Lenny, I feel. <laughs> I think it's really hard for women who haven't found their partner to relax into that because it's like so intangible mm -hmm. and it creates it, it it not creates it needs hope it needs trust mm -hmm. and especially when they've been burned or hurt or heartbroken or betrayed or worse it's like I think for for women calling in love like a big thing is just believing that what they want to call into is possible so if if part of our support and journey is just getting them there and after believing it's possible it's actually then believing that it's coming mm -hmm. and i think it's a journey that you know the women have to be ready for but what is what i can say because i mean i've only been here for a couple of rounds and diana's been for so much more is that the women get there mm -hmm. and when they do get there when they do have that trust and belief, like one of the women, um, I don't know if you heard her message, Diana, one of our participants said, mm -hmm. she's like, oh my God, I have this, this deep self-assuredness that he's coming to the point that I realize I need to make the most of my singlehood because it's <laughs> almost over. <laughs> and I mean, like, wow, if that's not trust. Mm -hmm. And she's that's... been consistently there for like the last little while. Like, it's like, we can sense this person is like right, right yeah. there. Cause they're, they already are, right? They already are. They already are. Mm -hmm. And like an analogy that I recently came up with is like, if you like say your king or your man or whoever you're calling in is like a destination, right? So it's like, you put it into your Google maps, the little marquee shows up boop, and it says, you know, it takes, it's going to take you two hours to get to your route. It might be a little bit longer and each person is going to have like a different route to take. But what I believe that school of love is, it's part of that route. 
And like you have these little pit stops that you're like accumulating along the way. And an invitation that we were offering the woman is like, could you relax and actually see the fact that you're in here or you're ready for this kind of work, the actual confirmation that he's already on his way? Because if he wasn't, you wouldn't be showing up for yourself to welcome somebody in, in this type of way because you want to honor yourself in a different way, because you want to honor him in a different way, and because you want to honor the definition of a new relationship in a different way. So it's, it's, I think it's elusive. And I think because like those associations haven't been made, like you were saying in the movies and society, but I think as soon as somebody is ready to do better for themselves, for themselves and for their life and like all the different situations that life has for them, that that should be a confirmation Mm. in and of itself, that Mm -hmm. the thing that they are looking for and seeking for is getting ready for them as well. And then we talk about what the slow burn is like, you know, when you meet someone that you have that interest in, like trying to make that as practical and tangible as possible, like how, how to actually implement and be in the slow burn and actually enjoy the slow burn. Like one of the things we talk about in both groups is a sense that like, that safetyness with someone that like it's not like knocking you off your feet and taking all your breath away and you're not falling in love you're you know there's a whole other feeling we're trying to tap into it's like that safe is actually sexy and so whether you know it's like enjoying the slow burn in a relationship that is starting to develop something new or even like reminding yourself or tapping into the feeling of like I'm safe with my partner like in the other group the women in relationships and there is something so profoundly sexy about that like when I really allow that to sink in like how safe I feel with Jack in all the ways right whether we're talking like loyalty or to be myself or he loves me so unconditionally and like to to really allow that to like permeate you like wow that is so hot like that is so special even when we're in the hardest of times like he is the one other person in the world that knows how hard this is right now Mm. that's special Mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's true like I'm I'm thinking like right now I'm I'm in the transition of I just moved in with my partner right and there's so much challenge and anxiety because our move wasn't easy. There were a lot of unexpected things that happened and it was just unnecessary stress- stressors for the both of us. And I find my being being like, let's, let's get back to like groundedness. Let's get back to normal. Like there's this anxiety to like fast forward through like the challenge and the tough and all of these things. And yet it's like, oh, well, how can I slow burn through this challenge knowing that I don't have to fear anything, that if right now this is the season that's here to teach me a few things with this person, at least I can relax into the safety that he's chosen me, that I've chosen him and we've chosen to do these things together. And how can we slowly cultivate these this transition? How can we slowly cultivate who we're becoming in this new chapter of being together in this new space so yeah I can see how it permeates more than just past the dating phase and even like the new beginning phase and later on in your relationship phase the slow burn is slow burn is like this I feel like this this reminder of like hey he chose you too and you chose him Mm yeah yeah Mm-hmm. And like, there's a reason for that. So could you just relax and give it a chance? Almost like it's like you're co-creating with the relationship and mm-hmm. give space to the magic of it to, to peer in. Mm-hmm. I want to switch gears for a second. One of the things that I really find fascinating in the journey too is like, how do I put this into words? The connections that are made around like, you know, oh, like when you really start to recognize that you have an inner child and there are these parts of you that want and crave and need your healing and how to explore that in relationship in all relationships with yourself, with other people. 
And then how that starts to open and invite in, like, okay, if my needs are met, what do I want? What it would be actually expansive? Like, what can I imagine feeling really good in my life, really good in my partnership, really like delicious? Like if I, and, and like, so now going past just the foundational and that being really necessary, but also moving into like, you know, your empowered self, your goddess self and, and her, like tapping into her desires and what's like her vision of love and starting to play with that. Like I think of one of the women in the relationship group and just how much she's connected things about her childhood and what that's bringing forth in her relationship now, like decades in, like this playfulness that she had as a child and how that's translating into her marriage and like it's informing the expansion if that makes sense yeah so if we were to like put that into i'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who has not participated in the inner yeah i'm like okay yeah. what does that actually look like yeah what it actually looks like is first of all like really taking a lot of time like we we never really stop talking about our inner child as we go along in the school of love. Like we never really stop talking about that version of us because that version of us never goes away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it is like a lot about coming back and recognizing, okay, how can I, as a being, as an adult woman, mm -hmm. show up for my inner child and take care of her such that she doesn't then need to be taken care of by her partner or her potential partner or, you know, her needs don't need to be met by those people per se. You know, it'd be nice. But like, honestly, if Dan, my partner, never met those needs, I would still meet her needs. I would mm -hmm. still meet my own needs of my inner child. What I then get to do, which is then what we go into next, is I get to all of a sudden imagine who I want to be as an adult <laughs> goddess self, mm -hmm. empowered woman inside of my relationship because I'm no longer wrapped up in what it is that's going on over here that I'm still, mm -hmm. we're always going to be healing our inner child as we go mm -hmm. through our lives. But it's not, that's not the whole picture. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to who we are Mm -hmm. And then we get to choose what that looks like, what that feels like, like even how we dress inside of her, the colors mm -hmm. that resonate for us, mm -hmm. the songs that maybe bring out that empowered goddess self. Where do we find her? What does she desire? And that's the expansion mm -hmm. you're talking about mm -hmm. that I have really loved and that I see the women in our, in our, circles Ooh. for women in relationship really realizing they can embody yes and what happens when they do it's mind-blowing and there's no like there's no like this is going to happen for all of you it's no. going to look different for every single relationship for every mm -hmm. single woman mm -hmm. i'd love to hear eleni what comes up as you're listening to this and thinking about your experience i want to pause for one second and I, I just reflect like a really obvious example is like the, one of the women we're supporting now in the relationship group when she like we helped her just kind of see like this invitation that you're waiting for from your partner he's made it it's open it's available to you you get to claim it and and when that light turned on for her and she was like oh like i just get to say this is what I'd love to do tonight. Like, and he wants to deliver that versus kind of always waiting to be invited, which was like a little bit of the inner child energy of like, I can't step up and just claim this thing that's already here that he's already clearly offered. And so now you're like, I'm a woman. I have, I have a voice. I have a man who really wants to satisfy me. And I get to just be like, mm, that, you know, that's what I want tonight. <laughs> and her being like, oh, okay. It's that, like, it can, it's not easy, but it can be that simple. Everyone's situation is different, right? Like once you, once you get clear on what you want, the only thing holding you back from like actually going out there and receiving it is, is putting it into words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I so desire this. I so desire 
that. And then that's where we circle right back to like trust and surrender. It's coming. <laughs> so good. So yummy. I want to go on that tangent, but I also want to answer the question <laughs> <laughs> because I think, I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of similarities and at the same time, I'm actually reflecting back to my own experience of connecting with my inner child while I was single. And, um, and I think it's one that a lot of women relate to when they're looking for love. A lot of women have this, they often say like, I just have all this love to give and I just want to give it to somebody. And it took me a really long time to understand that that love wasn't something that I should give away freely. I think it was one of my biggest humps to move past and grow through, you know, this Diana mm -hmm. and what the inner child connection did for me was it was like, it opened this world up inside of me of like all the love that I'm yearning to give. There's actually so many people that are actually craving and yearning to receive it and they're all inside of me mm. and they're Eleni at age four and seven and nine and 12 and Eleni at first relationship her first intimacy her first breakup Eleni when she wasn't able to express herself Eleni when she started to perform for attention all of those versions of Eleni somehow are lacking love and when that door opened and when I was able to see like there were all these mini me's within me it almost became like I had this click for me and I was like sorry like I'm actually busy right now giving love to all the little versions inside of me and I need to prioritize that instead of freely giving my love to men who are potential possibilities but I haven't really yes. stepped into yet so I feel like at least for me in that moment of time of, of, of my relationship with myself before I met someone, it was like this, Ooh, okay. That's where my light and my love needs to go first and foremost. And actually by attending to all of those versions of me is how I'm going to be able to give the most love to the right person when the time comes. Mm. Yeah, that was profoundly beautiful. I want to pause there and let that sink in. Let's take a moment. You know that I love to do that. Mm -hmm. Like just let things like settle and integrate. You know, anybody watching wondering like, yeah, but how does all this happen? <laughs> Can we just do something right now, like right now, where you literally like, I can't, all of my little beings are here and they're like, oh, I want that. Can you show us like Eleni and me right now, what it would actually look like if we were in a call, you would do exactly what you just did. And you would like guide us back to our bodies. Yeah. Let's go to the bodies. <sighs> okay. So maybe just taking a moment to actually notice your body. <laughs> Hmm. I'm just getting still. And just like really gently scanning the top of your head, all the way down. Feeling the soles of your feet on the floor. And notice where there is like the most energy in your body, like the most sensation, whether that feels good or not so good, just noticing where that is and maybe placing your hands there. Breathing into that space. And just noticing who or what is there. What's feeling alive? What's wanting your attention?
And if it is a past version of you, so when I'm working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, we would connect them to, to exactly where that is, but we'll keep it general here. If it is a past, like a younger version of you, maybe you can see, you know, where she is and you know, what she's wearing, how she's feeling, what she's witnessing. I'm just really sensing her. And then you might imagine walking towards her as your wise self. Maybe you'll hold her hands or give her an embrace or just be with her. Notice that how that feels for your inner child. And simply ask her how she's doing. How's her heart? What does she need? What does she want? And if you can imagine giving some of that to her right now. In the form of a message or an embrace. Maybe she wants to go somewhere. You can take her by the hand and walk her in that direction. And just notice how that feels. You may tap into how your body feels right now. And maybe even imagining a way that she can take this thing, this message, this place, this idea, this embrace that you gave her and carry that with her planting that seed in her heart. And just take that feeling in. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So for anybody who's watching this, kind of guided it as a meditation for Shannon and Lenny. But there's another way we practice it where we really go in for you individually and like get the messages that are coming through for you and work with those messages and take the wisdom from it and give her what she's needing. And it really starts to feel like you're calling in these parts of yourself, you're shedding old layers and you're like mm, coming into this like sense of wholeness. Now imagine when you are carrying that sense of wholeness, how that starts to translate in your life. So when we think about, or when we talk about like this beautiful journey, it's not just us in discussion all the time. There are some real processes that we're taking you through, right? There are frameworks. There are just like there are discussions, there are exercises, there's integration. And at the end of the day, it's really about equipping you individually in each session, whether it's one on one with me, whether it's with the group, whether it's your one on one with your support coaches. And like, what are you implementing? What are you taking away? What are you practicing? What are you bringing into your life? And we're always there with you checking in, like, how is that that thing that you're stretching into? How is that going? How are we course correcting, right? And so that's like the really practical part. And then there's this other part that's just straight magic. It's just pure magic. It's like you're in the space. So I think we can start to wrap it up here. It's like, if we can take a moment, ladies, to talk about the real, like the true impact of being held in a circle that feels so loving. And I mean, we can only 
tr try to make it feel safe. Everybody feels as safe as they can, but like really them saying, this is the safest I've ever felt in my whole life. Like, just like, can we take a few minutes to talk about like what that does? Like to me, what I witness in that is like pure alchemy. There is this pain or there is the story and I've let myself be witnessed in the most loving space. And that story starts to break apart and there's less charge and it creates a space for a new story that I wanna create, a new reality that I wanna live, a new pattern that I wanna be in, that I choose consciously as a woman. Does that make sense? Does that resonate the way I'm saying that? Yeah. Are you ready, Shannon? You go ahead. I can see you're ready. Here you go. <laughs> I feel it's like fun having like to like, hey, are you ready? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I think what is really beautiful because I've experienced it, but also just to witness, I feel like this space is created where if as a person, but more particularly as a woman you haven't gotten the opportunity to explore the different facets of yourself. It's like the safe space, the safe container where you can come and discover and cultivate and explore and try on for size different versions of you so that you can tap into what makes you feel the you is you and you're also given the opportunity to learn to trust that person because what's hard is especially as women is that there's all of these voices that are governing us and where it's so easy for us to put everybody before us and to put ourselves last and I kind of feel like it's the opposite in inner circle where we're like okay no you get to figure it out and we're here for your mistakes. We're here for your exploration. We're here for your detours. We're here for your five steps forward and two steps back. And we're also here for pushing you forward when you're ready and you're available and you want it. And we're here to cheer you on. And that space I feel is just like something that most of us might never ever get growing up. And it's, it's, it's just like this beautiful coming home, like, oh, now that I've had this like free range to play and discover and fall down and get back up and tr press this button, try that outfit and try saying this thing, this is who I can be. Mm -hmm. And, and there's this sense of like, there's room for all of you. There's room for all of the versions of you, the human, the empowered, the perfect, the imperfect, the feeling great today and feeling really not good today. And we're going to love on all of it. Mm -hmm. And that is like, there's no price on for that at all. And it's, and it's just tenfold. It's just like reflected back to you mm -hmm. in mirrors of love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the women are like really ready for partnership. Some of them actually just want to see their patterns break. Some of them are like, I am just yearning to feel my heart open. And like what's so profound too and then I, I'd love to hear from you Shannon what's so profound is like the women you're in circle with like we call it inner circle for a reason and it becomes more clear to me with every round that we go through it's like it's not like um, a program that's called manifest your man or you know it, because the journey the inner journey is yours what is it like we 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 ask you your intention and we and we keep anchoring you back into your intention and helping you move towards that and the women that you're in circle with are also so wise and so deep and so like not only do you have myself and your support coach depending which group you're in you have the other women who are like holding you so whole and like loving you every step of your journey and also holding the vision for you when it's hard to hold it for yourself. Shannon, and, and then we can start to close it up. Um, although there's so much we could talk about. What do you feel is like when you witness the women being held in such unconditional love, like what do you see? I see, well, for women in relationships, 
and maybe it's the same for any woman of any stage relationship or no no relationship you know it's almost separate from the relationships at that point once we get to experience that level of safety we then get to bring out the pieces of us that maybe we haven't brought out anywhere else you know that really are so deeply embedded in there that we're working pretty hard to keep that to keep that part of ourselves protected and not seen and so it is this like continual like opening and there's no pressure to go there there's, at any time inside of the inner circle is always a choice like mm -hmm. even inside of that kind of a meditation like you get to choose if it feels good for you or not you get to choose how deep you want to go into exploring your mm -hmm. inner world <laughs> but what I have noticed when I'm supporting the women in relationship and even as I've been inside of that circle the last two rounds before that, I, my own journey was like, okay, as I begin to feel safer here, I can take out this thing that I really haven't talked about with anybody else. And that's so important. It's so special. It's so sacred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I think we can tie it up with like, if you're feeling into, maybe you just enjoyed listening to this conversation and I hope you have, and that is enough and that's beautiful. And if you're like, well, I like, what is the journey actually like look like? Well, everyone's journey is unique, but like how we actually roll it out. This is a six month journey. And we, we meet together as a group every two weeks for two hours and it is delicious. And yeah, in between- Huh? two separate groups two mm -hmm. separate groups so there's the group with eleni calling in love thank you and the group uh with shannon i'm in both groups um the group with shannon for women in relationships so eleni is supporting me in one group and shannon in the other and then in between those sessions which i think is so critical is the support you have with us there's an application called voxer and that's where we have these chats where we are in touch we are right there with you every step of the way for six months. When there's something you wanna celebrate, when there's something you wanna ask, when there's something you need to talk through or even just be honest about and have just people witness you, when there's something you need coaching on, like we are with you every step of the way. You have a one-on-one -on -one with me and you have three one-on-ones with each of your support coaches, like marking every two months to really help you move along your journey and keep you accountable to the intention that you came in with. Um, and then we also have three group hypnosis sessions around the inner child, your future self and your desired partnership. So it's really mind, body and spirit. It is about going through a deep inner journey to like open the, open the doors to embodying this is really inner circle is about embodying a new way of love. It's not just about learning or doing, you know, um, like exercise sheets and checking things off. It's like really about like taking it in and in living those changes and seeing real tangible results in your life. Anything before we go? I have this massive vision in my mind of like inner circle is like when the caterpillar enters the cocoon mm -hmm. and or creates the chrysalis mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to be scientifically correct <laughs> <laughs> i have kids who are really into bugs right now <laughs> so the but the caterpillar it go it creates this chrysalis and it's in there and it's like completely safe that's what the inner circle is like the caterpillar you has everything you need already in order to like completely recreate yourself and emerge mm -hmm. as a butterfly. Mm -hmm. We just happen to be holding you and supporting you as you almost like recreate yourself. It's like almost a re reorganization of your beliefs, your, your ways of being, your whole mm -hmm. sense of self. And then you emerge at some point maybe in the middle of the six months journey, like everyone's emerging on their own mm -hmm. perfect timeline. Like there is no, like by this time you will have emerged. <laughs> you, are, you are emerging when you are ready into this version of you that is like literally magical. Mm -hmm. I love it so much.
Can I say one last thing? Mm -hmm. I think just like what I want to say to everyone is, you know, this is an investment in love. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes as women, we see it as an investment in love as like a relationship. So either one that we're calling in and or one that we want to improve. But it's so much juicier than that because it's an investment of love towards yourself. And I think it's what we all need, even though we don't know it. There's nothing more luscious or luxur more luxurious or just soul filling to say like, hey, I'm investing in me, myself and I, and I'm going to be loved on like nobody's business. <laughs> and even if that's all that you get, it's just mounds mm -hmm. of beauty and safety and goodness and it feels so good okay well that brings me to how one visual I'm having like if you're at the center of your life and you are pouring into yourself and like calling yourself home and getting clear with yourself and getting honest with yourself and making changes and stepping up and stepping in and like grounding and all the areas of your life are reflections of who and how you're being whether that's the relationship with your children or men or one partner or your parents or your siblings or your clients or whatever it is, your health and all of these areas, they're reflecting parts of you. Imagine how those, like what, how those reflections start to change when you really call yourself home and you're clear, you're clear in your yeses, you're clear in your nos, you're clear in your standards, like you're clear in your devotion to yourself. Mm. It's, it's totally love changing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll wrap it up here. I wanna say thank you so much to you, Shannon and Lenny for doing this with me and just being so open to sharing with me, but even so much deeper than that, like I always feel like, wow, the women in our groups are so lucky to have you both. Like, I know they're lucky to have me. I know we're lucky to have each other, but like for them to have you as well, shining your light and your magic in, our, in your unique ways, is such a gift to me. I feel so supported, which is how I want every woman to feel, to feel supported. And it's such a gift for the women. And so if there's anybody watching this now or later and you're feeling the pull, get in touch. I will, maybe what I'll do is I'll drop a link below where you can just fill out a form and say you're interested to learn more and we can have a chat uh, or just send me a message in whatever way we already communicate. All right, ladies, lots of love. Thank you so much. Okay.